that are watching at home. Hopefully not in your pyjamas, although actually that's the good thing about it, isn't it? <laughs> I, um, I think it's really special to be here. I look over and see some people that I've known for many, many years. People who've seen me from a child and, uh, and others that I don't know. But I think that there is something really special happening in the Illawarra at the moment and I am so feel so privileged to be a part of it. So we as iCentral are really excited to be able to be here, some of us, uh, today to, to join in this space. <clears throat> it's... Um, what I love about you know, the, the word is that we, that no matter how you look at these familiar stories, which probably this one is, there's just these layers that God just keeps pushing us into if we're willing and we're open to, to go. So that's my prayer today, that we would know that we say, oh yes, I know this story, but be open enough to say, God, what, what do you want to teach us today? <coughs> And uh, I know that for the last couple of weeks as I've been rest sitting in this space, I have been quite surprised where God has taken me. So hopefully, uh, I won't apologise, I'll just, um, I just have to be honourable in that space. Um, the question that came to me when I started to look at this passage was that classic question that, Jesus, that God asks Moses is, what's in your hand? And uh, I want to start with a question for you guys that, that came out of that question. And that is, what is, uh, what is something that you wished or thought, I hope God never asks me to do that? <laughs> oh, that's right, I'm in charge of the clicker. <laughs> this could be interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure. Am I going the wrong way? Oh, so none of my slides are there? Slides aren't there. Oh, oh good start. Yeah, it's like, all right. So nothing's there. Oh, I had such great visuals for you. Oh, well, it's all right. I, um, this is the uh, children's worker in me. It's all right. We can do it. If I've got nothing, that's fine. So my question to you guys is, again, I hope that God never asks me to do that. Have you ever felt like that? I'm going to ask you, maybe just a little bit now, giving you a bit of time, to just turn to someone beside you and, and talk, if you're willing to share, what is it that you have at time, sometime in your life, went, that's, I know how that feels, this is what I, this is what I thought, I hope God never asked me to do that. What, what could that be for you, or what is that for you? Does it come straight to your mind, or you have to think about it? Just chat with someone beside you about that. So I don't know what came up for you. Ironically, when, uh, when I first thought about it, I thought about when I was about 17, 18, and I knew, and for some of you who knew me, I knew in myself I loved to sing and I wanted to be a rock star. I really wanted to sing. And uh, as things started to kind of, um, you know, as I started to grow and work within and ministry within Wollongong Church of Christ, at the time, I, I knew I wanted to use my voice for God. But there was no way I was going to talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll sing. And if those of you who knew my dad, he would stand beside and he would lead. And he would say, it's time for you to talk. And I go, no, I'll sing the song, but I will not talk. For years, he would just kind of keep looking at me. Is it time? Is it time? Is it time? And I was quite determined that I was never going to speak. 
I was just going to sing. And, uh, and that, was that, that was that challenge. Along with that, you know, I was really happy to talk to kids because I love kids. But adults, they're scary. <laughs> I don't want to talk to adults. So it's quite ironic that I'm here and Stephen's out there <laughs> with the kids. And, you know, I think about that song we sang, I Walk By Faith, and I could feel, I don't know about you, but I could see myself walking across that stage, you know, stomping my feet, and uh, we were just getting warmed up, weren't we? So I was really happy to sing. But God, don't ask me to speak. And don't ask me to speak to adults. <laughs> So you gotta be careful what you are, what you say, don't ask me to do that, or I never thought he'd ask me to do that, because here I find myself leading worship for years and speaking. And then on top of that, you know, I was not really a good writer. I don't think I still am a good writer. And my mum will attest to that because she edits everything I write, <laughs> fixes it up, makes it make sense, and throws it back to me. So all the things that I thought I would never do, now God has been challenging me to step into. So I don't know what that means for you guys. Um, but it is about finding God in the journey, isn't it? And, and I have found that that's been really challenging, not only in my own life and what you, whatever it is that you said or you think, that you said, I don't want to, I don't want to do that, God, don't ask me to do that. I think that we all feel a little bit similar to what Moses might have felt when he's standing there saying, I can't do this. Don't ask me to do this. And, you know, the lack of confidence or whatever it is, there's a reason. But the teacher in me knows that any behaviour is actually, there's something behind the behaviour. And so often we can look at the great the story and, yeah, God's going to give us confidence and, yes, we don't feel able. But going to that next level for me in the last couple of weeks, I always saw the lack of confidence and I could relate to that. I didn't see behind the lack of confidence why Moses was asking and saying those things. I hadn't seen that before. And maybe that's a confession to say that I haven't gone deeper into this space, but I, I just... There's one thing for us to say, yeah, I'm, I'm not confident someone else can do that. It's another thing to be able to, to actually just look deeper into uh, why Moses might have felt that way. Thomas de Kemper has a quote, um, and he says, The humble understanding of yourself is a surer path to God than deep inquiry into knowledge. The humble understanding of yourself is a surer path to God than the deep inquiry into knowledge. And so we can look at the story, we can know the story, we can have all that knowledge, but how brave are we to go deeper into that story of what's in your hand? Because, and I, I will say, I just need to say on camera, this this was the stick that Stephen bought for his story. This was the stick that I bought. <laughs> and when I walked in today, he said, oh, now that's a stick. <laughs> Can I use it for my story? And I thought, yeah, that's no worries. But that means he stole my thunder. So I'm, I'm stealing it back. Yeah, this is the stick. This is the stuff. And he's standing there at the fire at the burning bush. And I know that all that's amazing. And he's standing there with a staff in his hand. And he's having an encounter with God. Can you even imagine it? I can't. But he's standing there, and the staff is the first, one of the first things that Jesus said, that God says, what's in your hand? Now I know God's going to use it for glory, but stop there for a little while and think about what is this? What does this represent? Because this represents a prince who became a shepherd. This represents a man that had every opportunity and every influence and every ability as a prince to do whatever it is that he could do in that space. But because of 
something that he did. He became a shepherd because he had to run in shame for murder. That's not a light mistake. That's a, oops, you know, that's not a, oops, I'm sorry. That's a pretty serious mistake. That's a pretty serious mess up. And so, so Moses is running uh, away from all that maybe he had the opportunity to do to, to a place where he can hide. And he's standing as a shepherd looking after sheep that aren't even his because they're his father-in-law's in a place that is foreign to him because of a mistake that he has made. Because of something that he's ashamed of. For something that he's running away from. For something that he might have thought many times, this is not the story I planned for myself. But here I find myself in a foreign land, holding a stick, thankful that someone took me in. I'm still hiding because I'm still ashamed. And that's what's in my hand. I, I had never seen that before. He actually named his son Gershom. And that meant I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. So he was very aware, if he really looked into himself, where he had landed and why he had landed there. And in some ways he was hiding there because that was the safest place for him. I don't know if you are starting to feel or imagine maybe what I've been feeling in the last two weeks of the things that I'm hiding from or the things that I'm ashamed of or the things that I'm thinking, that is not my story. And God, I, no, that, I, I thank you that you are amazing and that you have saved us and that you have freed us, but you know, um, don't highlight, don't highlight the bits I want to hide. That's what God's doing here. He's saying, what's in your hand? I don't think Moses would want to answer that question. It's like he's saying, I see you. Have you ever felt that when someone sees you? And you kind of think, oh, what do they see? If only they knew. And that's why we keep coming back to God because he sees something different. When we're caught in our own, oh, what do they see? He sees something different. Before we go into the story that you know, let me illustrate it in another way. I've got a kid's book here. It's a great one. And I'm wondering if there's two people that might be able to help me with this. This would be really cool if it was someone from Southern and someone from I Central. So that, that, that's not even a hint, that's a, this is what's going to happen. Okay, all right. I've got my people. Come on down. Come on. All right. So, yeah, you can stand there. And Roz, you can stand here. Right, beautiful. Don't know if you've ever seen this book. It's called I See. These guys are going to read it. Okay, and the way they're going to read it is they're going to hold it like this. Yep, you can hold the book together. Right, okay, and you're going to turn the page. And you're simply going to read what you see. Now, would you like me to get a mic for these guys? Would that help? Yeah. All right, just let me hold it. You're all set up, you're looking great, you're looking great. All right, I'm going to be the mic man, mic woman, like whatever the heck. Oh, woo! Oh, that's all right, we're just tripping over my staff. Mm. All right, are you ready? Okay, so. I see first page. I see last. I see future. I see past. I see up. I see down. I see a smile. I see a frown. I see water. I see sky. I see swim. I see fly. Right. Take the book and spin it round. <coughs> We're there, Edie. Left ways, right ways, upside down. Take the book and spin it round. Mm -hmm. All right. I think you're 
Yeah, that's it. We're good. I see empty. I see full. I see push. I see pull. I see left. I see right. I see day. I see night. I see yuck. I see yum. I see dad. I see mum. Turn the book and see who's right. High or low, or day or night, turn the book to see who's right. Keep going the, the right way. Okay. Okay. I see two peaks. I see three. I see forest. I see tree. I see rules are not turning page. I see high. I see low. I see stop. I see go. I see best. I see worst. I see last page. I see first. And we're back to the beginning. <laughs> How cool is this book? Yeah. No, uh, have you ever seen this book? No. no. It's a great book. And it's awesome because it just simply reminds us that it's all about the perspective of how we see things, isn't it? If you ever want to have, come and have a look at it, it's great. It's uh, at the pictures. But how clever it is that you can actually look at the pictures and depending on what or where you're looking from, you see something completely different. So when I stand here and I think about this stuff and everything that it must have meant for Joseph, Oh, I will say Joseph, because I've been teaching Joseph for the last two months, so excuse me. Moses, 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 everything that Moses was seeing when, when he's holding the staff and God says, what's in your hand? He was feeling a whole lot of things. God was seeing something completely different. And uh, if you don't believe me with the... A kid's book, of course, you need, only need to move into scripture, the more it goes into the story. When he says, drop the staff and see what happens. Now, have you ever wondered why he chose a snake? Like, couldn't he have made unicorns and something pretty? Couldn't he have done something different like a snake? I mean, snakes represented evil, didn't they? Snakes represented um, failure, shame, death. So, you know, I'm, he's seeing me, he's seeing that I am not what I, what I it's not my story, and now he's going to actually go to that deep space and actually not just say, hey, yes, I see that, but let's make something amazing out of it, let's make it become a firecracker or something really exciting. No, let's just go right there to a snake. To death, to shame, to evil, to back in the, in the garden. And then, are you kidding? Pick it up. Like, seriously. <laughs> Pick it up. But only not to do that, but to, in, case, in case he says, in case you don't get the first one, Put your hand inside your jacket. Again, would you like to see something nice come out of it? No leprosy. Leprosy stands for rejected, unclean, ugly, outcast, not good enough. I don't know. I don't know if Moses was even thinking or feeling, you know, are you trying to prove a point? Are you trying to really rub this in? Are you trying to make, it, make me realise, yes, yes, I have made mistakes. I just feel like God was really trying to help him not just say, yeah, okay, I can do miracles, but actually all the things that you think are way too far gone, are impossible for me to use, are way too broken, I can use them for my glory. I can do anything with it, even when you think it's too broken. God says that to Moses, and he says it to us. I have never 
thought of the staff in this way before then. I just saw the miracles. I just saw what God did. But I never saw it before until in the last couple of weeks when I realised the bigger miracle is that in the journey, whenever God is in the journey with us, whenever we never walk away from him but we stay and we even feel like we want to hide, he keeps finding us and saying, I will use everything that, everything that you think is not good enough or broken or rejected and I will use it for my glory. And so, of course, this staff became quite a feature in Moses' story from here on in. Think about the things that he had to do with, with this staff. He, he used it to, to um, be able to you know, make some of the plagues happen. The seventh plague of hail, the, the eighth plague of the locusts. Um, he used it for the ninth plague of darkness. It, it was quite key. In fact, God actually says to him at the end of the passage, take your staff and let's go and do what I've called you to do. So it's, it's very, I just think I never saw the importance of it. And every time he would have done it. I mean, then he parted this Red Sea with it, didn't he? He... Um, used his rod to, to break get water from the rocks twice. He used his rod to hold up in his hands for the, the battle to be won. It was always a part of the story. And there's that part that kind of reminds me now that when I want to kind of put that down and you know, put on the new, oh, I'm a Christian, oh, unless God's going to serve me, I'm going to be this. Actually, God just says... Come on, let's, let's bring your woundedness with you. Bring all the things that you want to be ashamed of or things that you said, no, I don't want to ever do that. And I'm going to use that for my glory. I can see him with the staff looking over the promised land. Taking this with him and seeing that God was always in the journey. I'm sad to say that I can't give you a picture. I almost brought my picture, as in a blown up picture of it, of this incredible picture that I wanted to show you about, um, that I saw in, in Christchurch this year. Christchurch, if you've ever been, has got these really beautiful murals all over the buildings. They really are stunning. And one of them uh, that I came across is a two, three story building, was these incredible hands that just uh, that are just open, these open hands. And I was quite, I've been quite taken by, in fact, as I said, I've talked, we've talked a lot about it and it's been quite a, a theme in a sense for us this year of we don't feel like we have anything in our hands, but are we willing to actually just open our hands and give you God whatever it is that you have, that whatever's there. And, and I wanted to be able to show you that visual to, to imagine for yourself what, what is in your hands. What is it that you said that you hope you never asked you to do anything with? What is it that you even feel like, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, for the last couple of years I feel like I've had nothing, nothing in my hands. Everything that I thought I had has gone. It wasn't my story. But God still asks us to open our hands, doesn't he? He asks us, what is it in our hands, even if there's nothing, are we willing to give back to God? As he said to Moses. I'm going to ask you just to put your hands out in front. Even if it's not something you feel you can do, even if it's something that's uncomfortable, even but just just because sometimes you have to move to just be in that place. Even if you struggle with it, could you open your hands in front of you? Just as an act of worship. Even it's an act of faith as we step out in faith as we've sung today. And even to just to close your eyes. 
and to ask what is in your hand? Consider. What are you holding that you never wanted to hold? What is the story that you're sharing that still shocks you that it's yours? Well, God says to you, I want to use it for my glory. God says to you, will you trust me? Can you say to God, I give everyone and everything to you. Take what is in my hand and use it for your glory. stuff I cannot unsee I cannot unsee the staff when I look at Moses he astounds us with this staff as he you know um, comes to Pharaoh he splits the sea he breaks water from a rock and he helps the Israelites win the war picture of Jesus, a shepherd, a prince who became a shepherd. What I love also about this passage is it finishes at verse uh, 14 to 16, this, this phrase part. It says, actually after three times he actually started, he says he burned with anger, like God's like, stop, not trusting me. <laughs> he burns with anger. But he says, what about your brother Aaron? I know he can speak well and he's already on his way to meet you and he'll be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help you, both of you, to speak and teach. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if your mouth, as if your, he were your mouth, as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand so you can perform signs with it. So even in all of his, uh, you know, oh, but I can't, but I can't, he says, you don't have to do this alone. Aaron's coming. That's why I believe we're meant to be together. That's why I believe that we're meant to do this journey together. Because we're not meant to do this on our own. And we need people who see us and love us and walk with us. And Aaron was that for his brother. And they went through some incredible journeys together. In the last 12 months, I have been incredibly blessed by Stephen, your pastor who um, reached out to me about 12 months ago and has walked very closely with me. I am so thankful that he and the other ministers within, within this uh, community, within the Illawarra, have done that. And together, as we join together in these two communities, I am reminded that we're not alone on this journey. And we can see things from different perspectives, but in the end we're going to put the book down and actually go, God can use this for his glory. And he is. I don't want to be uh, too prophetic, especially with Stephen not here, but I actually believe, I do believe that God is doing something in the Aurora. And it's been, it's definitely been 15 to 20, 15 to 16 years since all four churches have been connecting, loving, serving, 
praying for each other. God loves unity and is doing something. And I am so excited to be a part of it. I don't know about you. So we don't know what's coming next. But like the reminder of Aaron coming to walk with Moses, not only do we have to be challenged about what's in our hand, even when we feel like it's nothing, that God can use it. But when we join together, there is something really powerful about that. And as Aaron and Moses went on the journey to do what seemed impossible in their strength, which was impossible in their strength, we saw God bringing glory out of them. And so I am anticipating, as I hold my staff, this gnarly wooden old staff that represents all the things that are broken in me, as we step forward together, I believe that God will use it for our glory, for his glory, sorry, for, for the journey that he has for us in the Amora. And so I am really excited about that. And I just want to finish by praying for us, for you and for us, of what that looks like. Hello. <laughs> sorry, I, I knew it was off, but I wasn't going to. Um, what that looks like. And that does start in some ways with all of us potentially next Saturday. But I just want you to know, the journey has been really special in the last 12 months. With Jono, with now Peter Watson, with, um, with uh, Stephen, myself, meeting with Ken. It's just been incredible when we share and we walk together, holding whatever it is that's in our hand and willing to step forward and serve him. Father, we thank you that you always were, always are, and always will be God, Saviour, Redeemer, Father. You have never changed. And so, Lord, even though we can look at a story that was written so much, so many years ago about a man who was all, in some ways, in a similar journey to us, we just thank you that your word is alive and real and when we actually take it into our hearts and examine ourselves, we know and we're thankful that you see us with love and grace and potential and you want to use us in your story. It's just, it overwhelms me at times. So Lord, thank you for this community that meets here for the impact that they're having within their community and the people that they do life with. We thank you that we can join within the Illawarra and see what you are doing with us together. We know that, Lord, where unity is, that your blessing is there. We know that you smile even when we sometimes see the frown. We thank you that you see so much more than us. You smile when you see us together. So unite us, may we love each other, may we care for each other, may we be a light that shines in the Illawarra that can truly set people free, just as Moses did when he took his staff and he went to Pharaoh. Help us, Lord, when we feel we have nothing, to trust you that you can do something with it. In Jesus' name. Amen.